Hey guys, hanging out in Fullerton. We're checking out a really cool folding fat bike from Elux. It's called the Sierra. Uh, this bike doesn't usually come with a little rack up front, but I think it makes it look really cool. It's the kind of rack that's connected to the steering tube, so it does it does sort of turn and it could tip. You know, if you park it and it's on an incline or a decline, it could tip to the side. But I like that it's it's sort of surrounded. It's not just a flat one. Um, and just the colors, it sort of stays out of the way. It matches the rear rack nicely. The front rack's $50 additional, but it, it comes with this rear rack standard. 25 kilogram max weight, 55 pounds. And look at that, it's got a pannier hanger. So you can click on, you know, a lot of panniers aftermarket, they've got a little like adapter thing at the bottom. That way you aren't flapping around when you're riding or rubbing on these extra wide tires. These are 20 by four inches, five to 30 PSI. So we rode over here on like pavement and we had the high, the higher air pressure because it's just more efficient, you know, and faster. You still get the like because of these knobs, but when you're off road and maybe you're riding through some gravel, sand, snow, just leaves, you know, any kind of off road terrain, lowering the air pressure gives you a sense of it's kind of like suspension, which is really nice because this doesn't have a suspension fork. Instead, I think they were going for like frame stiffness and control by just doing a steel like rigid fork right there. And then we have steel fenders as well. And look at how nicely those match, like just beautiful. Everything's paint matched here. Steel has some vibration dampening qualities. It's, it's tough, but it can get scratched and rust. So just keep an eye on that. Think about where you're riding it. Maybe use some touch up paint or some like clear coat afterwards if you do get it scratched up. I, I could see this being a fun like around town kind of bike depending on where you live, if it snows or you've got a little, you know, like a lot like this where you're cutting across and maybe you're doing some commuting or getting some groceries, you can load this thing up. Oh, check it out, we got the commuter train going by. Maybe you wanna take it on the train or, you know, put it in the back of your SUV. The folding aspect is just, is so cool. And then it feels a little more full size, right? Compared to, you know, a traditional folding electric bike. It, it, you know, that one does have a suspension fork. Maybe it's not as stable because it has the narrower tires but it's lighter weight. That's probably about 50 pounds, whereas this one's about 60. And I'm saying about, because I weighed it with the front rack and it was like 61 and a half pounds. Um, this is Sam. He runs the Electric Bicycle Center in Fullerton. Yep. And you just usually stock this with the front rack, right? Yeah, absolutely. And every surfer down at Trussell's wants one of these. Really? We've got a ton of guys that come in and buy them and they put the surf rack on the seat post right there. Huh, like the side thing where it kind of hangs yeah, off the side? Yeah, you got your board on the side and they all head down the trail because when you got done doing a session down there, you're just a noodle and you got to come way back <laughs> up the, yeah. all the way back to Carl's Jr. parking lot. And this just makes it nice and easy at the end of your, your day, you know? It's fantastic. And it, it can get you to uppers or you can go down or up the, the, the area there through the sand with the tires here. That's such a, a really interesting and specific use case. Um, and this is $15.99, so it's actually, it's like a decent price point. It's not too bad, fairly competitive with some of the online bikes too. And then you can come in, these guys have a whole bunch of colors. We're looking at like a metallic blue, but they've got like seafoam green, light blue, silver, gloss black, matte black, uh, only one size, but a thicker, this is like 31.8 millimeter seat post right there with a really comfortable thick. This is a Selly Royale saddle. I really, I like that saddle. It's actually, you know, considering the bike doesn't have suspension, this thing rides pretty comfortably. We've got ergonomic locking grips so they won't twist on you, which is kind of nice. They're, they're not like the nicest ergonomic grips I've seen. There's, see how there's a little bit of rubber at the end, but they're better than the cheap ones that don't have any lockers at all. Uh, the cockpit up here, you know, we'll get to that when we talk about the gears and stuff, but see how it's raised a little bit? It's elevated because this is a telescoping stem. So not only does it fold when you're trying to break it down, but you could raise it a little bit and there is like a minimum insertion point mark here. And you want to be careful not to raise too high beyond that because look at these cables. They're already, they're kind of tight. We got all these zip ties trying to keep this, it looks clean, but when you turn, see those cables start to get stretched. And I just don't want to see you guys you know, wondering what's going on when, when the connectors start to come loose like this one. See the yellow in there? These are color coded. They're nice connectors, but they, they aren't like the, you know, threaded ones. And there is, it's tight, it's clean, just don't overextend it. I guess that's, that's all I'm saying. Uh, on this side of the bike, we can see these awesome 180 millimeter mechanical disc brakes. So hydraulic would be nice, but a lot of the folding bikes, especially when you're trying to hit a value price point, they go with mechanical. Uh, mechanical brings them up off of the ground a little bit, and that way they aren't gonna get it like, you know, dirty or wet the way that rim brakes would. And I really haven't seen many rim brake setups for fat 
fat tires. So that's cool. These are fat bike specific rims. They're wider. We've got thicker spokes. I think it's like 13 gauge in the front, 12 gauge in the rear to support that really, you know, extra wide, powerful motor from Bafang, 180 millimeter rotor in the back as well. And I love where they've got that kickstand position. It's adjustable length. It's not going to collide with the pedals. Sometimes, you know, you're walking a bike backwards and the pedals start to turn and, and it gets like pedal locked and stuff. This is just, it's set up great. And the dropouts, the wheel goes down and it goes below this combination like seat stay, chain stay. And even the chain is below that, okay? So it's not gonna be bouncing and hitting the metal piece right here. And they've actually dropped the bottom bracket. It's just kind of a unique setup. They've even got this like little protector here, of course, because there's this plastic chain guide. It keeps the chain from bouncing off when you're on that rough terrain, but it's not as tough as like an alloy guide, okay? So having this like resting point for folding is very important. Okay, so looking back at this setup again, we've got a quick disconnect for the motor in the back. That's if you have to do some maintenance, you get a flat tire, you just need to change the tires at some point. Kenda Crusade Sport, you know, decent. It's got some branding and stuff. These are not the cheapest tires I've seen. It should get the job done. The rims themselves though, no punch out. So sometimes rims like this, you'll have punched out holes to reduce weight and to give you even more comfort because it gives more flexibility. But they're already four inches. These are already gonna be a lot more comfortable than, again, the smaller, like, you know, narrower tires on a traditional folding bike. So I, I like this setup. It just feels stable. It feels pretty comfortable, but they have a downgraded derailleur. This is just seven speed, 14 to 28 tooth in the rear. Turny, that's entry level, but that's what you see on a lot of these more affordably priced bikes. And I think they put the money into the fenders and the racks and the other nice thing, and that's fine. This is seven speeds, it's enough. Um, I've been pedaling this beyond 20 miles per hour and it feels comfortable because they have this much larger 52 tooth chain ring and it sort of balances out the smaller diameter of the wheels. It's set up right, that's, that's my feeling at least. Um, and then, you know, look at this, this cable right here, it's coming into the hub motor as they do so often, especially from Bafang. That's a little bit vulnerable if you're folding the bike or you're riding through some brush or if the bike tips, you just don't want to bend or break that. And then there's the derailleur, the shifter cable. It's, it's just a delicate side of the bike, okay? And that's why the kickstand's on the other side. If the bike tips, it, try to tip it away. And when you're folding, this is a little bit exposed because the joint folds to the other side. And then speaking of the joint, this is it's a little bit wider. So be careful because if you're pedaling along, you know, it's a fat bike and I think actually the bottom bracket spacing is a little bit wider too, so there's less of a risk, but I have been riding before and kind of bumped my knee or, you know, actually a friend of mine, Monica, bumped her knee and gotten bruised up and it was, it's not a fun day. So depending on your setup, this is more of a mid-step. It's not a super low step, but it feels stiff, it feels sturdy, and that's what you want when you have the extra weight of those big tires and fenders and everything. Uh, so yeah, anyway, that's just sort of a drivetrain overview. No quick release on the front. This is like a 10 millimeter axle with nuts. So you would need a tool to do trail maintenance, but honestly, I, you know, I, that just doesn't seem to be as much of an issue on the fat tires. These seem to be pretty rugged. I think that's a pretty good, like quick look at the bike. I want to do the display, but I see Sam over here, you know, motioning. You've got so many stories about these bikes. What, what else do you want to add about Elux, about this bike? Well, I want to first start with this fat tire bikes in general. You know, I was at Interbike about four years ago and they had like the whole genesis of the fat tire bike there. And I always thought it was for sand and originally it was for snow. And I was like, huh. what? No way. And you can see it, you know, okay, I get that. But also sand, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I've ridden them on sand, like literally at Mexico on the beach, dry sand, and it's amazing. I you watched have that video, to be at, great video. You yeah. have to lower the tire pressure, but it does work. Absolutely. So this style of bike didn't come out for the bike three or four years, and it just started coming, well, actually it's been out on the market now for about three years, and it was SSR was the first one that I saw come out with it. And I had other manufacturers walking in my store going, oh, nobody's going to buy that thing. That thing's ugly, huh. right? But it depends on what the customer wants. You put it on the showroom floor and it starts selling and then everybody's like second guessing, well, maybe we should make one of those too. Right. And I think the pivotal bike like this was the mini Rad Rover. Yeah. That was the one that set the standard that everybody else, and I mean, this manufacturer even came in and said, we want to hit a price point. We want to be competitive. We've got a dealer network. What do you think? And I'm like, I'll take it. Let's put it on the showroom yeah. floor and see how it goes. How has it been going? It's been all right. This bike's been selling really well, actually. And other brands I'm actually dropping because they're not making changes fast enough to huh. keep up. So this is one of, I think at the price point this is selling for, this is gonna sell very well. Okay, so I, the bike he's talking about, it's called the Rad Mini. It's like $14.99 and they do some free shipping and stuff. 
but being able to come in and test ride and have the different colors and the fenders. And this one has an integrated rear light, which I really appreciate. So integrated meaning it runs off that main battery pack, which is a uh, 48 volts. So it's a little bit more powerful. And I think, is it 10.5 amp hours on this? That's right, 48 volt, 10.5. Yeah. yeah, this is a higher capacity battery with, again, fat bike specific, powerful motor and it gets a mechanical advantage because it's spoked into a smaller wheel so they've they've done it right like i feel like they've made some good decisions the suspension that's one area they traded off if it would have had a suspension fork it, you couldn't have had this rack because you know there'd be stanchions and so the lowers would be sliding up and down there's no headlight that's one of the compromises but but look at this there's a usb port full size on the bottom of the display panel and that's not it there's also a USB port right here built into the side of the battery pack and an on off switch. Okay, so you've got lots of options. You can use, you could go camping with this thing, mount a big headlight here, power it by the USB, and then you could also take that battery out when you fold the bike, bring it into your tent, and you've got tons of tons of power to, to pull from to charge your iPad or whatever. Stealth hunting too. A lot of guys want to get into their spot early in the morning before the sun rises. Great way to get in, and then once you've quiet, no dress, smell, yeah, no gas, you yeah. It out, you can like just use this like they did the old Honda 90s back in the day and you'd like just walk next to it as a burrow with your, you know, or your, you could pack it or you put it on the back here somehow. Huh. Absolutely. Yeah, it's definitely set up well for that. And having a throttle is nice too, because sometimes when you're getting to the soft stuff to get started, like it's hard to start pedaling. And this has a cadence sensor. It's a 12 magnet cadence sensor, um, kind of a sealed design. See it right here, that little thing. So it's nice. It's a little bit more durable, more concealed. It's not going to get kicked out of position because it's like, internalized versus the older ones they'd be uh, usually on this side it was a big disc with like magnets you could actually see so nicer stuff like sam is saying they've been keeping up uh, they've got the, the wires really nicely routed along the bottom they aren't trying to go through the tubing which would look nicer but could get pinched a little bit easier they have the locks here so it won't come unfolded on you the pedals this is an area of like weakness for me personally they have the push-in folding design versus the ones that kind of have like a little lever here. And these are not aluminum alloy, they're just plastic. So if you have bigger feet and you're pushing down and they kind of creak and flex, uh, but you know what? That's what every electric bike with folding pedals, that's what that one has. That's what almost everyone, except for, what was the bike? I was literally looking at a folding bike the turn, other day. Turn has some nice pedals They have a there. really cool folding, uh, yeah, they're, they're out there. You can get them on Amazon. And again, this is nothing against Elux, it's just, those price are the point. cheap it's to, price point to, they and have weight to pick the components they're going to put on the bike yeah let's focus on the display shall we are we going to do that okay so um let's see the battery is in the bike it's all ready to go sam pressed the power button there it boots up very quickly power normal and eco so that's power mode in addition to five levels of assist so you can actually change the ride characteristics of this bike like to eco save the battery be a little bit gentle, or you can go up to power and have it really be zippy. Is that your take too? Yeah, but I want to elaborate on that more. So these three modes here, if you put it in eco mode, a lot of people suffer from some range anxiety. I got to have a huge battery because I got to go further, you know? By putting it in eco mode, you're retarding the power curve and you're not drawing as much amperage and as much juice out of your battery. Yeah. So you can go for those longer rides. Then when you need that extra power, and there's something else that's very critical about this. Some of these displays, when they program them in China, you've got to go through level, like there's a menu you've got to go through. One, two, three, four, five to get to where you can change those. This one, the first operation when you go into the mode to switch it. He's holding set to get into the settings right now. And the first thing you do is you change the power level. Much better than having to go, okay, that one, through that one, that one. And then this one is where you can change it on other ones. But it's I want you guys end. to know what we're going through. So thank you, but yep. Sam might be going a little bit quick. Okay, so <laughs> as you click set, you get different options here. So you can change the number of assist levels. Um, you can adjust the wheel size. You can adjust uh, the units for miles per hour or kilometers. And then again, you know, the different power levels. When you're done with this, just hold set. We're gonna leave it in high power mode and then we're back out. Okay, so down here at the left, we've got levels of assist. So five, four, three, two, one, and zero. And I believe at zero, the throttle works. I'm just gonna, yeah, look at that, full power. 
Which is what it should be. Which is, it's I, more advanced, but this is a bike that's, you know, a little bit fun and sporty. Let me explain why I like to have throttle on zero. Tell us, Sam. <laughs> so let's say you're down in Huntington Beach on the 4th of July, and there's yeah. 100,000 people on the boardwalk. I'm not exaggerating that number. If you're in level one <laughs> pedal assist, you're gonna be ramming up the back of people every time you go to pedal the bike. Right, it, uh, right. Uh, so yeah. you wanna leave it on zero, and you don't wanna go with the flow, and maybe the flow's only like one or two miles an hour. Then you can whack that throttle past 12 people and then drop back into that little hole where you yeah. know you've got that room to drop back in yeah i've done it it works that's the proper way in my opinion whack that throttle sam yeah, that's gotta, sam's well, words that's Here, hold on. it's a thumb tip, throttle not tip, a twist tip the throttle. bike again tip the bike i want to show sure. what sam's talking about so just gently push that throttle look at that look how slow and soft it can or you can whack the throttle and you go straight up yeah. straight up so he's right it's a variable speed trigger throttle and i like that it's a trigger because you know the bike's on right now it's hot if you bump the throttle the bike can take off and a lot of times you have a half grip twist throttle and so i th feel like for a sportier bike where you might be on bumpy terrain it's kind of nice to have a trigger in my opinion i like a twist throttle but it's personal preference yep right you know yep. tomato tomato yep. or whatever so back to the display panel a voltage readout which is a little bit more precise than this five bar battery indicator 20 percent increments to care for the battery it's best to keep it in a cool dry location avoid letting it get too low or completely run out because that sort of changes the chemistry so charge it every month or two if you haven't ridden the bike keep it you know out of the extreme heat and cold if you want to maximize the lifetime of those cells if you press set it cycles through some of the other menus here and i'm sorry you can't see because of the glare but you know odometer trip distance time um, I think that's kind of it. You know, there's also, I think if we hold the plus button here for a second, um, it turns on maybe the headlights. No? It's the on off oh, button. Oh, it's the on off button. Yeah, thanks, Sam. Uh, so there's just like a single LED here, but you know, it is a light, and then we've got a big reflector here to keep you somewhat visible as well. Maybe it's hold down for walk mode. Is that what we, what we got? I think so. If you hold the mics, yeah. Should be walking. There we go. There so is. that's walk mode. That's your other option if you're on the super crowded boardwalk or maybe a craft fair or you're just like maybe you get a flat tire on the beach or you just want to walk the bike. But remember, it's a 60 pound bike and maybe your surfboard's on it. So walk mode is actually pretty cool. Help you up the trail, the steep parts that you can't ride because this this is more stable than a lot of folding bikes because the wider tires. But it's still a folding bike. Okay, you know like, and I like the little rise and the handlebars and they're not super. It's it's a good setup oh and then check this out integrated bell in the left brake lever both of them have motor inhibitors so as soon as you pull the brakes it just cuts the power so you have power at all times when the bike is on but you also have control of the power what are we missing here sam it's a fun bike i like riding this bike let's give it a test ride well but first let's unfold it for everyone uh, everyone right. asks that. okay so let's turn it off first because this is where you get overzealous, you start folding it, and then the wheels are spinning? That, yes, I've seen that. But as soon as you crack this open, you're going to lose all power. Oh, that's a good point. Yep. Okay. So let's go ahead and start with the pedals. Let's Pop do the pedals. In. Seat drop, maybe? We, need... uh, we could try that, yeah. So there the we go. Down Drops it lower. down. Make sure it's not lower than the uh, stand down here so it's hitting the ground. That could damage it. This okay. one's fine. Open up your safety latch pop it open. Yep. I use my knee to fold bikes. If when they're new, especially sometimes they're hard, put your knee right here and push on it. Huh. And it helps you to fold the bike. Did you dress to match this bike, Sam? Cause you look very stylish. So <laughs> See, he forgot to put the seat locked up. in. It's sliding us, slip gonna, sliding all over the place. Yeah, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. So. Yep. And then check that out. This is where that little metal thing. i pedal over here so I can bring it in nice and tight. There and we I'm go. Drop it all the way down. There, and yeah. The last thing I want to do is bring my handlebars down. Yep. And then I would get the bungee cord and hold this together so as you're picking yeah. it up, the bike's not trying to accordion open on you, possibly. For real, yeah. And Sam's a strong guy. I mean, I would also maybe take the battery out. Um, it's yeah. only like five and a half pounds, but still, it's a heavy bike. I hope you aren't hurting yourself. You know, with Good. the with the Velcro, with the bungee straps, that's great. Sometimes folding bikes have magnets, but with a bike that's this heavy and big. You know, I, I get why they skip that. And it looks like maybe the racks are colliding a little bit right here. So sometimes you put a towel in between if you're going on bumpy terrain, Good you got idea. a van. You want to see the battery come out? Yeah, let's do that. So turn your key and they've got a, it'll just slide right out here for us. 
and hold on to it. You don't want to let your battery drop and hit the ground. <laughs> yeah. And then there's the on off switch. So, you know, one of the ways, if you're worried about this, it's locked up, but people could turn it on and mess with your display or whatever. You can, you can kind of like get ahead of them and turn the battery to off and then the display won't work. Or take they, the battery out completely. But I mean, I'm talking about surfing or something, oh, sure, right? Sure. Like at the bike rack. Yep. So this is, this is great. It's aluminum casing. I think that's about it. Now we can, we can hop on this thing. We can do a ride. Let's do it. Thanks, Sam. Good yeah. job. Back up that way a little bit more. So Sam's going to take off on this thing. You weigh, you weigh over 200, right? Yeah, I'm about 230. 230 right now. How tall are you, Sam? 6'4". Six, 6'4". Four. Six, four. Okay. And the reason I'm, I'm asking his stats is because of like where the handlebar position is. And you know, it's like, he's looking pretty good for, for a big guy. Um, go for it. <laughs> Thing zips. He's... All right. <laughs> nice. Let me get a higher speed going and we'll put a nice fly, all right? Okay, just be careful. It's got a lot of power, you know, the smaller wheel size. <laughs> Looks like those brakes are, woo! <laughs> this is not something you'd want to do uh, anywhere besides like a vacant lot. We don't, we are not trying to vandalize this, just having some fun out here. <laughs> that was great, man. Looking good on that thing. How's it feel? How's it ride? Uh, you want to tone down your pedal assist when you're in situations like this, use more throttle, I think that would be better and stay off the front brake on any kind of loose surfaces. All you got to do is grab a handful of that front brake um, and you'll go down, you'll high side or you'll come right off the bike. So okay. use more of the rear brake when you're off-roading in the, in the dirt. Than, what than does high brake. side mean? When you hit the front brake and the front end locks up like this, yeah. you're going to fly over like that. <laughs> So that's a high side. It's a motorcycle. I think term. I did that once <laughs> with yeah, my. It's, yeah, it's an old motorcycle term. When you watch them racing out there, they'll they'll high side off the bike. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, yeah that looks great. Maybe I can trade off real quick and, and yeah, show. You know, we so right now, guys, he was in pedal assist level two. I'm gonna take it up to five. Yikes. And I know, right? It's a little bit daring on like bumpy terrain. But the idea is I just wanna show you that this it is kind of a zippy. It's it's nice that you can dial in the power. Because if you don't, the bike is very like on off feeling. And that's why, you know, back to the throttle. So anyway, here we go. We're in a high gear. Again, pretty bumpy right now. I'm kind of like bringing myself up off the saddle because these tires are so full and I'm a lightweight rider. So it's kind of a bouncy, uncomfortable ride. So I, I really want to stress that the tire pressure makes a big difference. It's something to really kind of keep in mind. But you know, all in all, the bike's performing pretty well. It's nice to have like extra power and be able to turn it down versus not enough power, especially when you're, you know, you're a bigger rider or maybe you got this thing loaded up with gear. Hey guys, we're just cruising to the ride spot. I thought this would give you some perspective on speed. You can listen for the motor and just, you know, we're rolling over cracks and stuff. These tires, they really give you some cushion. It's a lot more comfortable and stable than the narrower ones. Pardon the barking dog, my friends. We are in a neighborhood with lots of fun dogs. Uh, from this perspective, you can see the e-bike specific rust resistant chain, 52 tooth chain ring with plastic guard here, folding pedals, everything we talked about. Um, I just wanted to, you know, pedal in this perspective because it's got that cadence sensor 
and you know there is a little delay for when the motor kicks on but you know it's a fat bike specific motor it's working pretty well i'm just gonna pedal along shift some gears and let's do it bye bye have a good day So I was an assist level five there, got it up to like 23 and a half miles per hour, had a pretty comfortable cadence um, and the motor was still helping. So I think this is one of the bikes you can adjust it and get a little bit higher speed, but the official top speed is 20. Okay guys, now we're on some dirt and these tires are a little bit full for like sand, snow and everything. We were on you know, pavement getting over here so it's more efficient at higher PSI. They're gonna be a little bit firm and maybe not quite as comfortable and you might hear the, the chain bouncing around uh, a little bit as a result, but I just wanted to give you some like off-road uh, feel. And I'm gonna take this all the way up to level five in sport mode, like the highest power mode. around a little bit but well that's pretty good i think you know we've kind of covered everything here of course sam i really appreciate your help answering questions providing some feedback real feedback from customers i've met the elux guys they have a pretty solid warranty do you remember what it is I think it's one year um, comprehensive both battery and anything mechanical how long have they been around now they've been around for about i'm gonna say three years now okay three yeah. years it's 2018 so i guess the point i'm getting at is chime in if you have any feedback or suggestions maybe we missed something i always appreciate that have fun out there you know be respectful where we purposely picked a vacant lot where kind of nobody cares yep. and when we're spinning out and stuff but otherwise have fun out there and ride safe